going to go over briefly about the FAM and the information from this will be available after. Plus, there will be a, another um, set of slides that will go up and there will be um, examples for each one of the um, FAM items. So we'll have a quick look at the essential background and then how to rate the FIM and the FAM, um, just a broad overview. So the FAM doesn't stand alone. It uses the FIM as a basis, and then it adds 18 items to those FIM items, specifically addressing cognitive and so psychosocial areas where the FIM tends to have ceiling effects. Plus, there's some community um, specific items in there that are really valuable um, to assess people when they're not in the inpatient sector. So a little bit of background. It was first developed back in the 90s by Dr. Carol Hall, who is an occupational therapist, um, and then more recently developed for the UK FIM and FAM, or they talk FIM FAM as one word, um, with permission from um, Dr. Carol Hall and in um, conjunction with Professor Lynn Turner-Stokes, who has been using the FAM um, for many years at the Northwick Park Hospital and other centres in the UK. So FAM has an extended area of activities of daily living, which is really um, applicable to people living in the community. Um, it essentially rates the need for assistance, the same as the FIM. And when what we're looking at is what type of assistance and how much they actually receive to complete the tasks. So like the FIM, there's no um, what they could do or should do, but what they're actually doing. And the FAM is environmentally sensitive. So in some cases, it may not appear to be um, disability friendly if equipment and um, the actual environment um, aren't conducive to the person's needs. So there's some factors that are known to um, affect the outcome. And these are age, time delay since onset of um, rehabilitation, severity, and nature of the deficits, looking at particularly physical, cognitive, and communication. And like from we know that there's some complications in scoring if you're looking at visual um, and behavioural problems um, for some of the um, people that we score these um, measures on. It also looks at mood and motivation. So these are the FAM items. So under self-care, we've got swallowing. So although we look at swallowing very basically in the FIM item, we go into it in a different way in the FAM, and that will be explained in the manual. Um, very important item, I think, of people out in the community is looking at their ability to do car transfers and their community mobility. Under communication, we're actually going to be looking at their ability to read and to write and speech intelligibility. So can we understand what people are saying? Um, under psychosocial, we're looking at emotional status and adjustment to limitations. And I think very important use of leisure time. And then um, looking under the cognition at specifically at orientation, concentration and safety awareness. And then there is the extended activities of daily living um, section, which will need to be scored in all cases. So it's not an extra. It is actually part for the RIF um, data set that these areas are scored. So looking at meal preparation, laundry, housework, shopping, financial management, and work education. <clears throat> so the timing of scoring um, to fit in with the um, with the RIF data set, the baseline rate should be within 
48 hours following admission to the um, the rehab in the home setting and then doing the discharge scores just before discharge. Obtaining the information for the FAM scoring will be by some observation, but a lot of it will be by communication with either the person, the family, or the carer or a combination of all. Because again, it's a 24 hour measure. So um, clinicians are not going to be there for the majority of that time. So communication is going to be very important. So how to rate it, looking at over it as a broad view. And as I said, I'll have more specific slides to go on the website. So people will need to be previously trained and credentialed in FIM. So FAM doesn't have any credentialing exams um, and there does not need to be any training because it's very similar to um, how the FIM scoring um, processes. So they'll also need um, for the FAM score to be familiar with the person um, and looking at the FAM ratings for gathering the information. Um, and it's best scored by a multidisciplinary team. So the people that are involved with the person having rehab in, in the home. So best to get together as a team and discuss what you, um, you will be scoring them. So FAM is essentially a rating of need for assistance. Um, like the FIMMERS, um, the actual performance, no would, could or should, um, what that they would do if circumstances were different, or in particular, what a clinician thinks they can do. The FIM, like the, the FAM, like the um, FIM, is based on what the person is actually doing. Each item of FAM must be scored. There can be no blanks, no not applicables or half points. There's a decision tree, very similar to what the FAM decision tree looks like. Um, so best to check the level going down, map your way down through the decision tree and then check across on the text page. If undecided between two scores, and this is where it differs slightly from FIM, FIM is quite black and white. It's either a score of three or a score of four. Now, in discussion, there might be, it could be a three for FAM or it could be a four, and we're actually quite undecided. So it does have some grey areas with the scoring. If that's the case, then you would always use the lower of the two scores you're deciding between. Um, so as I said, there's a decision tree and um, the actual text page is at the bottom um, of the FAM manual under the decision tree rather than on the page opposite like the FAM man the FIM manual. So if you disagree about what the score is, then check the manual. Make sure that you understand what the item is actually looking for and what the individual scores relate to within that um, item. Um, and as I said, if there's genuine disagreement, um, go to the score the lowest score, and if the function is variable, um, the same as the FIM, then you will score the lowest ability, the ability that's require, requiring the most input. So looking at the scoring levels here, so seven is complete independence. So they perform all tasks described in the makeup of the activity. Again, it's within reasonable time, it's done safely, no need for modification, assistive devices or aids. The six is modified in, in dependence. So it's still the same, nobody needs to be there for any reason to help them. 
but they may independently use a device, take longer than usual time, or there may be some safety concerns. So the same as you are familiar with the um, FIM scoring for those items. Out of five, it's still supervision and setup, and they receive no more than standby queuing. Could be coaxing, verbal, prompting, et cetera, or just setting up prior to the person doing the task. At the four, again, somebody is there, but now there is some touching assistance, but it's only incidental and the um, person must complete 75% of the overall task. The three, there's more touching assistance required than in the score of four, and the person now must perform at least 50 to 74% of the task. So in both the four and the three, the person is doing more of the task than what the help is doing. At a score of two, they're receiving substantial assistance now, but they've got some input, um, at least 25% um, of the effort to complete the task. But now the helper is doing more than what the person is actually doing. And a score of one is total assistance, um, or they contribute less than 25%. They don't perform the activity, or they're unable to um, perform the activity. So as I said before, no, not applicable zeros or half points. So again, automatically scoring one, if two people are required, um, the item's untestable. So they may be in a situation where there isn't anywhere to do laundry. Um, and also if the information is unavailable, they will be a one. Um, and like, um, scoring one in the firm if they put it at risk of injury. Um, if they're untestable or the information is unavailable, the suggestion would be that you make a comment in the comments section on the um, risk data collection form as to why. Just so if there's a trend, then we can see what's happening. Um, with these um, outcome measures. So with the decision tree boxes at the top, left and right, um, at the right, a description of the seven and then working down the page to um, a score of one. On the opposite page, unlike the FIM manual, there are some comments. comments. So if you're familiar with the FIM manual at the on the text page, we usually have notes underneath. Well, now the text is underneath the decision tree, but there's notes over on the um, on the opposite page. So this is what the um, decision tree looks like. Very familiar to people who are familiar with FIM. So the pros and cons of using FAM, it's scored by the multidisciplinary team. So it enhances team communication. Everybody talks about what the person's doing. So it's very person-centered. It does take longer to score because there is more information that's required. Um, and there could be some doubt. Um, it gives Better description of problems, especially for the walking wounded. Um, some psychosocial um, items can be quite subjective, and that's widely known. So, and the other thing on the bottom there highlighted that there's no FAM data previously collected by AROC to compare it to. So we're going into it um, brand new. Um, so just looking at a couple of the items um, to give people an idea of what it's about. Looking at community mobility, 
So this includes organising and managing personal travel within the community, planning a route, time management, paying for fees, um, using some form of public transport, which can be taxis, buses, etc., um, driving a car or, or driving a car, or getting around in a locality by foot or in a wheelchair. It also includes um, the ability to load and unload a wheelchair. So you can see that it's much more relevant to a community setting. Here's an example. Um, so Mark found a number and called a taxi to take him to visit his mother. However, he was unable to tell the driver where to go because he couldn't remember her address or the route there. Also, he had not thought to take any money with him and had not rung his mum to say he was coming. The taxi driver refused to take him. So in this scenario, he scored a one because effectively it didn't happen. The only thing he actually managed to do was to call a taxi. Sorry, should have popped that up. Um, looking at emotional status. So this is the ability to take responsibility for controlling emotions. Looking at impact of mood on day-to-day -day function. Frequency, looking at the frequency and severity of emotional disturbance, such as depression, anxiety, euphoria, frustration, agitation, etc. And here's an example. So Aisha is occasionally low and tearful and has a bad day about once a week. At these times, she needs coaxing and prompting to rally around and to look at how well she's doing in therapy, which makes you feel more positive. So the score is a four. She required help once a week or less often. So these scores and the definition of them are all in the manual. Um, looking at one of the um, extended ADL um, items, looking at meal preparation. So looking at the ability to plan a meal, organizing utensils and ingredients, preparing the food, planning the order of the tasks and looking at the safety side. So at level seven, they have to be able to plan a full two course meal independently, safely and in a timely manner. And then it goes down through the different schools. So Joe can make his own sandwich and a cup of tea while his partner's out. He can also peel the potatoes in preparation for the evening meal, but he tends to forget things on the stove um, when he's, and he gets flustered by the microwave. So he waits till his partner gets home, who then takes charge of the evening meal. So his score will be a three. He's able to make a cold snack and a hot drink. So that's the end of this short um, presentation on what the FAM is about. Um, however, I will um, have up on the website um, all the items and examples with the rationale for the um, items, um, for the answers for you to be able to access to, um, to see if you're on the right track with FAM. And any questions, please feel free to um, email into um, AROC and we will address them as they come in on a need to be basis. And we could start a list with frequently asked questions in the future if need be. So yes. thank you.